there's just so much fear around working out while pregnant that people are concerned that they can hurt the baby or something like that, but in reality, making it You've just tuned into Rebel Wellness Podcast, your resource for realigning and revitalizing your health and well being. I'm your host, Kaylee, also known as Coach Kales. I'm a holistic health educator, certified nutritionist, and fitness professional of nearly a decade. I'm stoked to have you with us. You just joined a community of amazing souls who are ready to break free from the confines of the often outdated and confusing health advice all around us. Living in a world overwhelmed by quick fix diets and unrealistic beauty and body standards, us rebels stand for change. If you're like me, you're exhausted with the confusion and polarization plaguing the social media health scene. My mission is to empower you to step beyond today's diet culture, adopt a holistic health approach paired with the foundations of science for lasting well-rounded wellness. Through teaching you how to tune in and embrace your mind, body, and soul, we'll reject one-size-fits-all solutions, realigning you on a better path that honors your unique needs and values. With new episodes weekly, this podcast is your sanctuary for deep wellness exploration, featuring expert advice, real life stories, and a true commitment to your growth. Your journey to better health and simplicity in life begins now. Let's jump right in. Welcome back to the show, Rebels. I am here to talk about part three, Prego series. If you've been following the series, I am so glad that you are interested in it, first of all, (laughs) and I hope that it's been helpful for you. I've had some really amazing feedback on the last two episodes of the series, and it's been everything to me because this is such a big conversation for us females and it's all over the place. You know, there's a lot of people who kind of want to approach it in a very general sense and kind of a little bit more fluffy, you know what I mean? And then there's some people who are coming just really raw and sharing their specific experiences. I've had a lot of people come and work with me or stay working with me throughout their entire pregnancies. So I've had a really unique opportunity to get to observe and learn a variety of different females' bodies, lifestyles, nutrition states, you know, internal environments that have potentially led to different types of pregnancies, you know, and I've gotten to really help a lot of females work through all the unique phases throughout each trimester in pregnancy. And I think that it's a good place to be from my position to be able to kind of share with you guys a variety of what I've seen because as many of you know, especially if you're pregnant right now or you're getting pregnant or you've been pregnant, you know that not all pregnancies or a lot of people say not one pregnancy is the same. There's definitely people who have very similar pregnancies. There's also like the standard route or something like that. It's really hard to say what is normal or common, you know, because both of those mean different things. But at the same time, I'm trying to pull together as much of my background with working with a lot of different ethnicities and pregnancies and body fat percentages with pregnancies and stuff, because all of those come to play when it comes to how your pregnancy goes. You know, I've had a lot of Asian background, Pacific Islander more specifically, who did end up getting the gestational diabetes. You know, that is something that us Pacific Islanders are a little bit at higher risk for. And then there's also those who had a lot of precursor Uh, blood sugar dysregulation signs, insulin resistance, all that kind of stuff that did end up getting gestational diabetes as well. You know, and a lot of this stuff um, is great to know and observe because it can help you better prepare and navigate your pregnancy. So that's the whole goal of this Prego series is to try to bring to light a little bit more of the unique nuanced things that I've observed personally, because you can get a ton of basic pregnancy advice everywhere. I mean, everything out there, there's a lot of that. So what I'm hoping to bring to you today is a little bit of other sides to the story and more things to think about when it comes to, you know, your fitness and your nutrition throughout your pregnant phase, which is, you know, usually around nine months. So it's a long chunk of time, but it's really not that long either. So I have a lot of things to say and share with you today that I think you'll really love because, you know, there's some encouragement that I will want to hope to get through to you when it comes to especially your fitness, the way you treat your body during your pregnancy and all of that. So 
Without further ado, let's get into this episode, but I do always want to invite you to come join our community on Instagram at Kaylee Loren or at Rebel Wellness Podcast on Instagram, and I would love to invite you to come join our monthly wellness newsletter. CoachKales.com is the best place to do that, and I have a lot of other amazing resources for you on my website. So go check it out, scroll around, see if there's anything on there, especially my freebies for you. I have a whole detox guide that is a free download for you. So I would love to come see you, pop through, join the newsletter list or download a freebie, whatever you would like to do. Um, I am here for you <laughs> and in the form of my website. <laughs> But also, you can always reach out to me and DM me on Instagram, say hello, or shoot me a question that you would like me to either consider for a podcast topic or just to answer right then and there, you know? I do also want to remind you guys that none of this is medical advice. This is all conversational based, and I am sharing my advice that I would give to anybody who is going through pregnancy and such. But as always, if there's anything unique to your health and situation, always discuss it with whoever you're working with professionally throughout your pregnancy, you know, your general practitioner or anybody who is in your corner from a medically professional state, because I do not want you to think that just because I say it on the podcast that you should be doing it. However, I am just sharing a lot of basic stuff that will not harm you. It should only ever help you, but I do have to give that disclaimer just to make sure that you guys know that I am not medically advising you as I do not know you personally. <laughs> All right, let's dive into today's episode. All right, so let's kind of first approach the fitness side of my advice for during pregnancy. I'm going to be approaching this in a kind of broader sense because it's some of the things that I think all pregnant females should be considering during pregnancy as far as their fitness routine goes, because there's a lot of really good, deep details I could get into, but I really think that it would be just more helpful in this specific chat to kind of cover more of the big foundational things to be focusing on and thinking of. Okay. So I know there's a lot more I could go into. And should you guys want to hear more details, I can totally make an episode on that. No big deal, but today let's kind of keep it streamlined. <laughs> so first important thing to note when thinking about fitness, it's really important to know that there's a lot of advice all over the place that is possibly a little too gentle in a way, I would say. I think there's a lot of outdated advice as far as pregnancy goes, because I mean, I can tell you firsthand, guys, I've trained females through entire pregnancies, pre, intra, and postpartum, like at least, I, I would say, I think almost 30 females at this point, maybe more, honestly, because my early career when I was still at like LA Fitness. And there has never been a single person who needed to be quote unquote, extra careful during pregnancy, aside from the usual, like, don't hit the baby with a barbell and stuff like that. But I would say that it's really important to know that your stereotypical advice from a lot of general practitioners, unless you have a very specific reason, you know, something medical that's specific, something physical that's specific, most females actually can completely work out and lift weights just fine throughout nearly the entire pregnancy. You know, um, there's just so much fear around working out while pregnant that people are concerned that they can hurt the baby or something like that. But in reality, making your body stronger and helping your blood sugar stay balanced by m engaging the musculature, getting blood flow going consistently, staying strong, you know, supporting your structure, pelvic floor, core, all that stuff is super key to a really healthy and easier pregnancy, honestly. It's not a surefire way. I'm not gonna say that that's like the perfect cure to having like an easy delivery, but a lot of people have hired me in the past to get them prepared to have an easier delivery. And 99% of the time that has happened, naturally. Some things, there's always going to be complications that can come from genetics or um, circumstances with their internal health that just working out is not going to fix. You know what I mean? I can talk about that a little bit more later, but I think it's really important that you understand that overall, you absolutely can continue to strength train to the capacity that feels best for you throughout 
almost your entire pregnancy. I would say typically we scale it back the most the last four weeks before delivery. Like no joke. We, I'm not talking like orange theory or hardcore boot camp or crazy CrossFit. You know what I mean? Um, while there are females who can absolutely continue that all the way through pregnancy too, there's always the can you, but should you, you know, you do want to be paying attention to like when the relaxing kicks in and your, um, round ligament and your pelvic floor and all that stuff, or your pelvis in general starts to relax more. It's going to be a lot more uncomfortable to do certain things things with really heavy load bearing. But it is absolutely a myth that you can mess up your pregnancy by exercising, especially strength training. The people who I have worked with that have not kept up with strength training have typically had a harder time recovering from delivery or delivery itself, or, you know, a, a variety of things, you know, and, and I also want to make sure that you know that you don't have to strength train and all that stuff. I would just say that in my experience, there's a lot to gain from maintaining or bringing strength training into your routine, even if it's just band work throughout pregnancy. I know that's an, it's a phenomenal way to stay strong and active and have a healthier pregnancy, actually. So, that's something that I think is really important to set the table when it comes to fitness, because overall you should be thinking of how do I support my body and therefore support my baby? Because there's, there's just nothing to be specifically afraid of by keeping your muscles strong. You know, like if you don't understand the anatomy of how the baby grows and stuff, that'd be probably the first place that I would encourage you to go watch a YouTube video on. So you know that just by you doing squats and lifting dumbbells and doing curls or shoulder presses or any of that, all of that is benefiting you. It's not, there's no way it could put the baby at risk. So it's, it's really important that you remember that and, you know, just stay in your integrity while you're weightlifting, you know, see what feels right what feels like safest to you, you know, maybe if sitting in static machines feels better for you to do your strength training further into pregnancy as your baby bump is coming out more, you know, that's fine. Or maybe if you feel more confident just sticking to like band work, like I had said before, like the loop bands or the straight flat bands or bands with handles, do your thing. That's great. And for all my ladies who just want to continue doing dumbbells and barbell work, you absolutely can maintain that throughout pregnancy. You just really need to be making sure you're intentional about certain moves like barbell back squats or deadlifts when you get further into pregnancy, like usually around third trimester, because there's, I mean, obviously your baby bump's going to get in the way and you also need to be watching your form and making sure that you're making modifications that are appropriate. So I can't give you all of those things, but I would say a really great resource for you that actually I have my pregnancy postpartum athlete certification through is Brianna Battles. She is a great resource that you can check out and learn more from. She has resources for you. Um, it's phrased as athletes on her page. And if you are somebody who is weightlifting and is not a coach or anything, you would be considered an athlete. So that would be the resource section that you would check out. But it is really important to know that you can still do what you've been doing throughout most of your pregnancy. Absolutely. hundred percent. And you will feel better by doing it. You know, like one of my clients, she through pregnancy was, I think she was seven and a half months pregnant when this incident occurred. And she was, you know, carrying her bags, walking down to the beach out in Oregon and passed a woman who was, I think like five months pregnant and who was like sitting off on the side, kind of like catching her breath and all that stuff. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're like further along pregnant than me. How are you doing so fine in the sand and carrying all this stuff? And she's like, I weight lift consistently. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? And that was like one of my favorite stories because it, it really just shows that you shouldn't treat yourself like a little delicate feather, you know, again, unless you have a very specific situation going on with your pregnancy, you know, a medical challenge or something like that. But if you don't, you have no reason to stop weightlifting. You have zero reason to stop doing that routine because it's only going to make you weaker and make things harder. So do not fall for that, you know, and a lot of people are always like, you know, don't, don't carry more than 20 pounds or whatever. And it's like, yo, 
your baby's going to be over 20 pounds really fast and you carrying your baby and the things that come with your baby, like the diaper bag and the carrier and all that is already going to be more than 20 pounds. Most of your groceries sometimes can be (laughs) over 20 pounds. You know what I mean? So you really, that's really bad advice, really outdated. And um, I've never seen my female clients who have weight lifted during pregnancy have complications because they lifted more than 20 pounds during pregnancy. It's all kind of a bunch of baloney. But with all that said, when it comes to what type of weightlifting or exercise or whatnot during pregnancy, you know, it's going to be great for you to maintain some casual cardio, you know, more like keeping your heart rate between the 110 to 140 max zone through like walking, hiking, you know, some spinning and stuff in the first and second trimester. Typically, you want to start to be not doing cycling type of movements in the latter half of your second trimester and then throughout your third trimester. It's usually not recommended because your pelvis, especially when they'll relax in again, is kicking in and it's kind of spreading apart. You don't want to put your body in a position where you're shifting your weight to one side more than the other because you can kind of throw your back out. Um, Your SI joints can be at risk. You know, there's a lot of different things or just plain old discomfort in your pelvic region. I usually steer my clients away from like spin bikes and stuff in those in that latter half of pregnancy just to be safe because there's more risk than reward you know and I know that we all have seen like Robin in for Peloton you know cycling like crazy throughout her entire pregnancy but like again that's the kind of like could you but should you type of thing and I know she's opened up about a lot of her like challenges physically through pregnancy and sometimes having that like athlete mind where you're too hardcore is like it could be inspirational but it also could be harmful and for me I usually see that like why push your body that hard during the like singular nine months that you're growing a baby, you know, do what challenges you and helps you be as strong as possible throughout your pregnancy and improves your odds of a good delivery. But don't push yourself to the position where you're just trying to prove something. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've definitely heard of and seen even friends or acquaintances and such just maintaining hardcore fitness classes all the way through pregnancy. And it's really exhausting on the body when the body's already exhausted. Like you're creating an entire human and that's already (laughs) a huge load on you that you don't need to maintain those crazy fitness classes to bounce back, quote unquote, or get your body back. You know, my, my largest beef I have is with that kind of, um, mentality and way that we approach women when it comes to pregnancy and postpartum and like we glamorize and honor the females who can totally look like they did or better before pregnancy after pregnancy and in reality it's like no you're shifting into a new chapter your body's been through an insane thing like in reality it's an insane thing that you just did and you lose like i had said in the previous episode you lose like 40 percent of your nutrient stores when you create a baby because you give it to your baby and your placenta requires a lot of nutrients and stuff and so it's really important to remember that like now after having the baby or while you're creating the baby taking the best care of yourself and your baby is primary setting PRs and hitting fitness goals and beating the odds of the standard pregnant woman, you know, is, is not in my opinion worth it overall. So listen to your body, become mindful and intuitive, but at the same time, you don't need to become a complete potato, but you also do not have to become some impressively insane athlete (laughs) during pregnancy either. You kind of got to land in that middle zone. You know what I mean? And every week isn't going to look the same. Every trimester isn't going to look the same. It shouldn't. It really shouldn't. And um, you, you also too, like just have to notice whether or not you're recovering worse. Like if you're sore for way too long afterwards, maybe that means scale back on the weight, scale back on the intensity or increase your rest periods in between or just completely reevaluate what you're doing for your programming in general. Maybe your old programming with barbells and kettlebells isn't feeling good. You need to shift to maybe cables, bands, and static machines. You know, be flexible and fluid, but you don't have to give up on yourself at the same time. But one of the really specific big tips that I give all of my clients, and I've always trained my clients to through pregnancy, is when you're preparing your body for pregnancy, the 
best thing to consider is your abdominal muscles and your pelvic floor muscles. And the goal isn't actually to have a specifically strong pelvic floor or strong abs, but you want to have what's considered a coordinated system. A coordinated system means that both of those components to where the baby's going to grow and then how you're eventually going to push to deliver is in a position where it can lengthen and shorten through a full range of motion consciously and subconsciously in response to what is being asked of it. So day-to-day skills or things that you do, getting out of the car, stepping up the stairs, uh, you know, sitting down on the couch and then getting up, as well as once you are giving birth and going through delivery. So you want your diaphragm and all of those things that are involved in where your core is. Sometimes I would just consider that like your abdominal region. You want all of those muscles and stability to be coordinated with your pelvic floor muscles because those need to be kind of in tandem so that everything kind of moves a lot more smoothly and is supportive and that you don't run the risk of, you know, organ prolapse or opposite a hypertonic pelvic floor that won't relax during delivery. And then you tend to see these females go through an emergency C-section because they're not dilating enough and all that kind of stuff. I have seen that so much, so much guys. (laughs) And it's really hard because uh, despite, you know, kind of giving advice, it it, is kind of like you have to experience it to kind of really learn it. And so if I could give you advice that you could hopefully learn without experiencing, I would say, If you are somebody who's done a lot of, you know, Orange Theory, F45, Berries, you know, all those types of hit class type of fitness classes, you may probably be somebody who has a hypertonic pelvic floor. So there's hypertonic and hypotonic. Hypertonic means you're constantly contracted. This is really common with people who do a lot of athletics or again, like strength training boot campy type classes, because, you know, when you're going through something that's high intensity, we're often bracing everything all the time in a way where we actually are untrained in actually relaxing our pelvic floor. Hypotonic means that we have pretty weak musculature or tonality to the muscles in our pelvic floor, which puts us at higher risk for having a lot of issues with potential organ prolapse if you give natural birth. And that means that like, yes, your organs can kind of drop out of your pelvic floor and such. And um, that is not ideal. Either side is not great. And either side actually can correlate to incontinence after pregnancy, um, after delivery rather. So it's kind of important that we look at and learn our current pelvic floor situation when we're trying to put ourselves in the best position during pregnancy to set ourselves up for a good delivery and a good recovery. So with that described to you, it is hopefully helpful for you to understand that it's not necessarily that you want to build a strong pelvic floor. It's actually that you want to learn whether or not you are hyper contracted or too relaxed or not, you know, connected to your core at, or your pelvic floor at all. And same goes for your core muscles, so your abdominal muscles, um, your obliques, your abdominus rectus, you know, all these different things. You want to make sure that those are all kind of balanced and coordinated, that you make those mind muscle connections, that you can actually practice bracing and even kind of pushing through more of your pelvic floor muscles and the vaginal tract versus defaulting to pushing with your butt. (laughs) <laughs> which is often why a lot of people, you know, sometimes you can't actually avoid it at all, but women who are less connected to pushing with their vaginal tract and their pelvic floor and all that stuff tend to actually poop more during delivery because they don't know how to connect to those muscles. So sometimes by default, pushing the way you push to poo is actually feels the same and can kind of do the same thing as encouraging along pushing in the vaginal tract. But without too much description there, even though a lot of us are probably fine with the TMI stuff, it is important to know that you can actually isolate and train working, pushing just more in the vaginal tract and less in the butt hole region. <laughs> so that's something that I think you would benefit from either 
looking up some great resources on YouTube for working through and getting more acquainted to your pelvic floor, as well as seeing a pelvic floor specialist in your area because they can even use little machines to help you connect to specific muscles in your pelvic floor and all of that area. And they actually too can palpate and help you discover whether or not you are hypertonic or hypotonic. And that's invaluable information for, again, during pregnancy and postpartum. And again, there's great free resources online where people can walk you through some of that stuff, specifically on YouTube, but just make sure that you're following somebody who is a like licensed or certified practitioner who has like some background in why they're telling you what they're telling you, because there's definitely a lot of people who are just like, I experienced this thing and this is what I did and it worked for me. But again, all pregnancies are different. And you also want to make sure that it's somebody who actually understands like the full complexity of the anatomy down there because that can really help you better understand yourself individually. All right. So with all of that laid out for you, hopefully you can kind of better understand what to focus on a little bit more with fitness. But again, I would say do not be afraid to weight lift. I'm not going to give you all of the, the most specific things that I would tell you to do, because again, I don't know you individually and it's all kind of broad way for you to approach and interpret what is going to be best for you and your body. But I would say that I have usually seen some good wide stance, deep squats to be very beneficial for practicing, bracing your pelvic floor and relaxing, you know, be careful that you don't pee, you know, when you're practicing. Um, And, but at the same time, it is important to kind of connect with relaxing your pelvic floor and seeing what that feels like. Cause it, it's always been one of the best skills that my clients have worked through throughout their pregnancy that helps delivery be so much easier and smoother. There's a lot of other great exercises that you can do to connect with your core and your abdominals and obliques where you would definitely want to practice and learn whether or not you know how to properly brace your core. There's, I would say the the main thing that I have often seen be a challenge for many clients initially when we start to work together before, like in the early stages of pregnancy, is they don't know how to properly brace their abs or brace their core in general. And so they don't know how to exactly connect. And a lot of times we tend to think sucking it in or any of that kind of stuff is bracing our core. However, it's not. It's actually kind of a bad habit that I think a lot of us females have kind of developed over most of our youth because, you know, we always are kind of told to suck it in, you know, don't stick out your belly, all that different stuff. And so sometimes I would maybe argue that most times when I start working with people, when I tell them to brace their abs, they usually just kind of suck it in. And that's not entirely right. Oftentimes it's pretty wrong. So there's um, some good core bracing exercise and diaphragmatic breathing exercises that again, I would recommend you take a look on YouTube for that require you to lay on the floor and kind of have your hands on your belly area and kind of connect your mind to muscle of how to properly flex and brace those muscles. You know, some moves like a dead bug, a wall dead bug, a floor press where you press on your thighs and push your thighs away and then drive your knees towards your face. You know, those are all fantastic ways to force core and ab connection, which will be important for you to practice because throughout pregnancy, especially third trimester, when the belly is bumping, you're going to really want to make sure that you know how to brace that area because when, again, like that round ligament starts to stretch out and it's going to be pretty uncomfortable, having the ability to kind of brace and pull in your abdominal muscles is going to be really, really beneficial for you. As again, especially during delivery, but it also will help you avoid diastasis, which is where you usually see that coning where the linea alba on your abdominal region, you know, smack down the middle where the little line is, where your belly button is, it splits and things can cone out. If you've ever seen that before, that's diastasis. Some people pronounce it diastasis. So, you know, there's a couple different ways you may have heard it, but that can be an issue caused typically by weak abdominal tone, so weak musculature in that area. Sometimes it can just be genetic. Sometimes it can just be if you're somebody who's carrying twins or triplets or so, 
it's just there's too many babies in there. You know what I mean? So don't feel bad or shameful or any of that stuff as much as you can. If you do end up with that coning, that sometimes is unavoidable. But it on the other end can absolutely be avoidable if you are somebody who feels like you don't have a lot of abdominal tone or connection to those muscles in that area throughout your pregnancy. So that's one of the easiest things that you can train and build connection to that is absolutely safe for your baby. Um, a lot of people worry that when they do like bracing and all that kind of stuff, like flexing, that they're like squishing the baby, but no, the body is amazing. It creates space, everything moves around and those muscles are meant to be there. <laughs> so don't avoid them. It's again, way worse when people do nothing like nothing at all. So that's something important to consider. But I would say that, you know, there's a lot to consider when addressing your own specific body. You know, if you've had any trauma to that area where you have scar tissue, you know, maybe past surgeries or things like that, that can, of course, interfere with the way that you can train those muscles and how well you can connect with them. So don't get too obsessive, I would say, perhaps of how well you can connect with those muscles and all of that, because sometimes you may just be limited by natural situations. And especially for my ladies who have been pregnant before and are coming into another pregnancy and they're wanting to make sure they're set up the best way possible, I would say it is also normal for you to feel like um, that area still feels maybe not necessarily damaged, but more like disconnected. And so bringing connection back to that area will be more than beneficial for you, especially because sometimes we can get a little bit of scar tissue or again, just untrained, just being deconditioned in that area can often happen, especially, you know, having your first baby and then raising that child, you know, that there's, it takes a lot out of us and a lot of focus, but Really working through your body awareness ultimately with this fitness section is really key. So focusing on where you can address your breathing, a lot of tendencies that you tend to err towards with your movement, you know, and kind of seeing if you can improve it as your body goes through each different stage, each different trimester, kind of how I'm talking about it. So it's a little easier for you to reference because I'm not going to go by week this, you know, because that's kind of, it's person to person again, you know, some people struggle at month six, some people struggle at month three, you know, there's a lot of different things that can happen as far as physical adjustments. But one of the best things you definitely can do, like I said before, is keep those muscles strong and make sure that you're staying as connected as possible to your body, your core, your pelvic floor. That's going to be your best bet for maintaining pelvic health and function during pregnancy and postpartum. So we'll talk more about postpartum stuff, you know, in the postpartum episode. So stay tuned for that. But for now, it's really important that, you know, during pregnancy, you can totally work on those things and make great progress during those nine months before you deliver. And I am always the biggest fan of trying to have a natural delivery as much as possible. Uh, and you will only ever have your best chances at that through also making sure you're really well connected to all those muscles and taking care of your body that way. And again, some moms don't get that opportunity. You know, some situations occur that make it much more complicated and that's totally okay. And having a C-section is not a bad thing. You know, it's very common nowadays. You totally can recover from it, but it is one of those things where like, if I had to say which I would encourage you to prioritize is definitely trying to prioritize natural birth for a multitude of reasons, more than just, you know, the fact that it's quote unquote, the most natural. We're not going to entirely get into all that stuff for today, but I hope that some of that advice is helpful to you for during doing fitness during your pregnancy and just making sure that as each week proceeds on, you continue to listen to your body and honor it as needed. And I think there was one more thing I wanted to let you guys know is that, ah, uh, yes. So when you are getting towards the end of your pregnancy, I'd say like month seven, eight, nine, it's really important to try to make sure that when you step down from things, 
if you're somebody who's getting a lot of back pain or you feel like stuff is off with your pelvis, there are pregnancy rated um, chiropractors that are fantastic and can absolutely help you. And it's completely safe for the baby. If you are not somebody who has access to that or finances for that or doesn't want to do that, it's just important that you make sure to take care of your back throughout that latter half where, you know, all of these things are shifting around, preparing to push a baby out. And you always swing your feet around, step up with both feet down on the ground, you know, getting out of your car. Don't be lazy and just throw a leg down and start to stand up. You know, a lot of things can happen from that in a negative way to throw your back out. So it's very important that you try to build the habit of swinging both feet over and then stepping or standing up off of both feet instead of just like hopping off one leg like you can usually do when you're not pregnant or in early stages of pregnancy. That is one of my pro tips that I for sure want to make sure you guys know because it is very common for the clients I've seen who are pregnant and did not do that and stepped out of their very tall SUV or whatever just on one leg, throw their back out because all of those bones and joints and muscles are kind of loosey goosey during the latter part of your pregnancy. And you can totally avoid that by being just more careful and intentional about how you step and stand. It's it's definitely kind of weird feeling, I'm sure, to have to care about that. But, you know, it can totally help you avoid back problems as much as you can. That is going to wrap up our conversation about some of the fitness stuff that I would recommend for during pregnancy. If you have any other further questions you'd like me to go deeper into, I'd love to hear it. Again, you can message me at any time on at Kaylee Loran on Instagram or at Rebel Wellness Podcast. Those are the best places to reach us um, to ask me some questions. But let's jump into the nutrition tips and advice. All right. So similar to the fitness, it's going to be kind of a more broad approach to what I'm going to suggest for my best nutrition advice during pregnancy, because this is an area that is, again, very unique person to person. You should always be talking to your general practitioner or whoever you are working with throughout your pregnancy that is overseeing your entire pregnancy and keeping track of things for you before you make any decisions specifically that are like radical changes to your nutrition. Everything I'm talking today and my usual standard advice for pregnancy is always going to be as close to natural as possible. I typically take a more like functional medicine approach to nutrition, a more holistic approach rather as well. Um, They kind of go hand in hand. Some people call it integrative nutrition. It's one of those things that we just really want to let the body do its thing. You know, it's been doing this for a really long time, guys, and our our human race is still here. So obviously the body's been doing it right. (laughs) So not making it so confusing is going to be the best thing that I could tell you from the beginning. There's going to be a bajillion people giving you a thousand different types of advice online. But my tip first off the bat would be try to quiet some of that noise and just return to what is going to be the most nourishing for you and the baby throughout the entire pregnancy. And just being mindful of, you know, some of the different changes that you would want to avoid typically during pregnancy, such as too much raw fish or things that are raw that are not pasteurized. You know, there's little things that people are concerned about where it comes to different bugs and things and such as bacteria and whatnot, parasites that can interfere with your pregnancy, which I mean, naturally, of course, you don't want to be doing that. But it's also one of those things where it's like, should you completely avoid it? Or like, should you just reduce it down to like a very minimal amount, you know, and and it kind of depends on how you feel, you know, ultimately, because if you want to just give up sushi to rule that out for the whole nine months, go for it. If you're somebody who is absolutely the biggest sushi fan ever, I would say just go for the highest quality from the best rated sources and have it very, very occasionally and try to be mindful and keep an eye on the fish lists that tell you about which ones have higher mercury and such. Usually the bigger fish, you know, the predator fish are going to have a lot more mercury because they eat all the little fishies that also ate the mercury. (laughs) So typically you want to go like away from like the tunas and such and stick more to the smaller fish, like sometimes like the salmons and such. So being mindful and choosing that for yourself is very important, but I'm not going to necessarily tell you 
you know, don't eat sushi and don't eat, you know, this or that. I will say, you know, definitely probably avoid alcohol. <laughs> Not probably, you should absolutely <laughs> avoid alcohol during pregnancy because there's just, you know, way too much conclusive evidence of how it can affect babies. We have stronger alcohol now than we ever did in the past. You know, a lot of people back in the Roman times were drinking watered down wine. So when people say, well, in the past, they used to drink wine throughout pregnancy, it was watered down wine. And oftentimes it was because they had not sterile water to drink. So the wine used to help it, um, as if I remember that correctly from history class. However, it's not like the same as now. You know, we have really strong concentrated caffeine in our beverages now, and we have really strong concentrated alcohol in our liquors and things now. So those things, I would say, definitely, you know, avoid alcohol as much as possible. And you might be somebody who might benefit from like reducing or avoiding caffeine during your pregnancy too. You know, some of these different accelerants and such can be really helpful for you to heal and focus on the baby and help your gut not be so inflamed. You know, the coffee and cortisol episode is really good for you to reference as far as learning a little bit more of that connection to the gut and such and hormones, you know, therefore. But uh, when you're in pregnancy, I mean, you're existing in a progesterone state the whole time, but a lot of people are still high estrogen throughout their pregnancies, depending on where their body is at. And so you do want to support your body as much as you can throughout pregnancy. You know, you don't want to just go willy nilly with your food and just be a slave to your cravings and such. You know, and a lot of my clients who have worked really hard to up their mineral and nutrient stores in general pre-pregnancy for at least like a year pre-pregnancy have way better pregnancies than the clients that just kind of jump into pregnancy and then like don't take things. I would say that there's a lot of very safe vitamins and minerals, especially through companies that are like third-party tested and quality controlled, such as like pure encapsulations, vital nutrients, designs for health. There's a new company that I have seen some good stuff come out called Needed that has more fertility and pregnancy supportive supplements that have been designed at therapeutic doses for women. So that could be a great resource for you as well. But the main thing that I always advise is that it's really crucial to choose nutrient dense foods that provide adequate nutrients to promote both the health of you and the development of your growing baby or babies. You know, specific nutrients that are imperative to the nutrition management of pregnancy and digestion is going to be all the components of fiber, prebiotics, probiotics, hydration, ample hydration, you know, and especially like magnesium. That's one of the biggest ones that I always see people deficient in. So when I am prepping clients for pregnancy, we are always upping their magnesium and it's therapeutic doses. So it's between 300 to 600 milligrams beforehand. And that's absolutely safe because a large majority of us are massively magnesium deficient. That's very common. Magnesium is one of our electrolytes as well. So we need it for more. We need magnesium, I think, for like 300 systems in our body. It's really important. And you are not going to overdose on it by taking 300 to 600 milligrams a day. Absolutely not. Some people actually need to go on higher doses. And actually, in fact, it's important to know that like a lot of people who deal with preeclampsia, it's because they're magnesium deficient. And what the hospital does or the emergency crew does and when they come and treat you for high blood pressure during pregnancy is they'll pump you with a magnesium drip. That's straight up what they do. I've had several friends and clients have to do that. Well, my clients haven't had to do that, but um, they've had people they know go through that and frequently and constantly have to get pumped with magnesium. And it's like, just take a good quality magnesium glycinate or any of those variations of magnesium that can help support your body and take enough of it. Enough of it is key. A lot of people shy away from it and you're not getting therapeutic doses. So therapeutic doses is where your body is actually getting a positive response. A standardized dose is where it's standardly safe for the general public. So most supplements are actually dosed at like a serving is a standardized dose. So that's where people tend to be like, Anyone is safe. Your grandma all the way to your like 13 year old daughter is safe to take one serving. 
However, typically, especially for pregnant women, you need more of a therapeutic dose. So you may need three or four servings of that supplement, for example. Okay. So that's something where you want to remember and be mindful of that you just taking sometimes the single serving a day may not be enough. So that's where taking pregnancy specific supplements, especially good quality ones, is very important. You know, a favorite prenatal that I tend to recommend is the Thorn Pharmaceuticals. You also can get a very good prenatal from that needed company. And I do believe that I, I like the ratios and therapeutic dosing on like pure encapsulations. So you want to kind of check around and see which ones have some of these. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit, a list of certain nutrients that are really important to make sure you're getting enough of during pregnancy, but you want to make sure that your prenatal is of good quality, meaning bioavailable, meaning that your body can actually utilize these nutrients and put them into your system and help it get safely through the placenta and into your baby's body so that they're also nourished properly and for a variety of other reasons too, you know? So that list would be, you want to make sure that you're getting enough protein. So you need to have like a full complete amino acid complex. That's very important. Um, you really want to have iron, folic acid, iodine, and choline, and as well as calcium, vitamin D, potassium, fiber, and again, magnesium. So those are the really important nutrients that you want to make sure you're focusing your nutrition around during pregnancy. All of those nutrients are extremely helpful for not only your body's ability to stay up with the tax that the baby will take from your body, but also the development of your baby. So it's also recommended more commonly now for um, DHA, which is one of the um, main components to omega-3 supplements. You have EPA and DHA. DHA is really important for brain health and development. So you'll see a lot more prenatals that actually involve DHA, but you can also take, if your prenatal does not have it in there, you can also take a omega-3 fish oil supplement that is DHA specific. I know Pure Encapsulations has a good one that will be more supportive of getting enough of that into your system. Of course, you can always get a lot of these nutrients from foods. However, I would say that sometimes it's really hard for some of my clients that I've seen and just pregnancy in general can make you not really inclined to eat a lot of the foods that include some of these um, supportive nutrients like fish, most seafood. A lot of people are pretty averse to seafood during pregnancy. So if that's the case, it is important for you to prioritize high quality supplements. That's something that I have definitely seen is that there's just sometimes in that first trimester, especially foods that you're just like, I'm not going to touch that. Or I ate a third of that and I could not get any more down. You know, there's a whole lot of different ways that it can go about, but I will say that prioritizing each and every one of those nutrients is super key to a very healthy pregnancy and an easier pregnancy oftentimes, because I've definitely seen it go south for people who have not prioritized vitamins and minerals and been afraid to take them during pregnancy um, for whatever reason, you know, I don't know exactly why that's happened sometimes from people I've known who've gone through pregnancy and avoided all supplements, but you're going to be harming your baby and yourself more than helping it if you do not supplement properly, especially if you're somebody who has a history of gut issues like IBS or any of that stuff or eating disorders or you know food aversions or nutrient deficiency symptoms in general you know a lot of the times that we have i have i have absolutely noticed a correlation between early pregnancy nausea and b vitamin deficiency and a lot of us females especially if we spent any chunk of time in our life taking birth control or any other medications that tend to deplete B vitamins, which are a lot, by the way. Um, I've seen a lot of these clients who haven't spent any time taking a good quality, you know, methylated B complex struggle with nausea a lot in the beginning of their pregnancy. And so it's really key that you spend solid chunk, at least like five to six months taking a good quality B vitamin if you are planning your pregnancy, you know, if you didn't plan it, then it is what it is. But I will say that I have conclusively always seen good results for clients that have taken consistently B vitamins, specifically activated B vitamins. So ones that are bioavailable, easy to absorb, pre-methylated, which means already activated. And that tends to be 
the best thing that you can do to help avoid certain food aversions and nausea and stuff in the beginning of pregnancy. Of course, it's not going to be the end-all be-all, but it's totally going to help. That is for sure. And it can also help the development of your baby in a lot of ways, not just B vitamins, all of these other ones, including complete protein with a complete amino acid complex, iron, you know, iron deficiency during pregnancy is not what's up. It's going to cause a lot of challenges, including nausea too, you know, so you do also want to be taking or having good iron levels in your body before pregnancy or during pregnancy. And folic acid, I mean, as we all should know by now, you know, it helps reduce the risk of spina bifida in the the development of your baby, but also a whole lot of other things. So that's really important to to pay attention to, as well as iodine, choline. You know, choline we get um, in a really good amount. The easiest source is eggs and different egg variations. So especially from yolks of chickens that have been raised on organic kind of biodiverse food. So not just grain, they're also eating like grass and bugs and stuff. I know that sounds gross, but uh, you're going to get some really nutrient dense yolks out of those eggs, including a lot of choline. So you do want to make sure that you prioritize things like that too, if you can, and making sure that, you know, you're taking a high quality electrolyte powder like Redmond Relight. You know, I have a lot of these resources again on coachkales.com in my Amazon lists. So check that out if you want my specific recommendations, but A lot of these things, you know, you can get through food or really good high quality supplements during pregnancy. And then, of course, it is always important to prioritize your fiber, both insoluble and soluble through a variety of vegetables and fruits and tubers, you know, throughout like yams, leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables like your broccolis and your um, Brussels sprouts, you know, cooked you know, cook them, roast them ideally is the best way to get the best flavor out of a lot of these vegetables and maintain the nutrients, um, the nutrient profiles and, you know, having a good diverse amount of, you know, bell peppers, oranges, you know, berries, a lot of these different fruits, you know, wild blueberries are great, blend them into smoothies, you know, put them into overnight oats. There's a lot of great things that you can get out of that as well as oats. I would say if you're going to do oats though, including oat milk, which you actually really have a hard time finding oat milk that is in this category, is I always recommend you stick to the organic non-GMO gluten-free. I know that sounds like really high maintenance. Um, Bob's Red Mill is your best resource for that. (laughs) You can order it online or get it at most of your markets. And that's going to be your best quality oat because a lot of oats these days have just a lot of, you know, glyphosate exposure, there's gluten involved, you know, there's a lot of those things that typically a lot of gluten does irritate majority of our guts. It's only once we remove it and then try to incorporate it again, do most people that I, especially I've worked with see like, oh yeah, I don't think my body actually really likes gluten that much. And during pregnancy, you know, it's better to try to maintain a low inflammatory diet. So not really eating a lot of Glutinous food products, processed foods, you know, staying away from nightshades. Nightshades can be kind of tricky on the gut and the body, you know, especially if you're somebody who struggles with a little bit of hypothyroidism, which is very common for females, which is a thyroid situation. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that right now, but there's certain seeds and certain additives, I would say, that like seed oils and such that can be irritable to a lot of people's systems. So trying to keep your inflammation down is going to be helpful because if you are somebody who has struggled with leaky gut or gut issues, you know, a lot of diarrhea, sensitive stomach, all of that stuff, constipation, you are more at risk for leaky gut, which can, you know, what that means then is that those food particles and stuff are getting into your bloodstream and it can cause a little bit of issues more than you really want to deal with during pregnancy because pregnancy itself can cause gut challenges in the first place. So utilizing your nutrition to be nourishing and more therapeutic in a way is kind of a really good strategy during pregnancy. And, you know, during the last part of your pregnancy, third trimester, Sometimes all bets are off. Sometimes your body's craving stuff because it's telling you certain nutrients it needs. So heed those cravings. And then maybe like a kind of a little fun thing that my clients and I like to do during pregnancy is when they're getting cravings, we look at 
what nutrients are found in good quantities in those foods, like pickles, for example. And typically what we find is that they're really craving potassium and sodium because pickles are a really good source of potassium and sodium, which is really funny, right? So you kind of want to observe like what you're craving and then figure and use that as kind of like intuitive feedback to become mindful of like, what is my body actually asking for? Like, what do I need? Because again, your baby's going to be depleting you of nutrients. So your job is to replenish those nutrients and try to keep them as strong in your body as possible. But again, being mindful of your current situation, your unique needs, all that kind of stuff. And it's totally okay if like one night you're just having crazy cravings and you're like, I just need Ben and Jerry's, whatever. Probably don't make that a routine, you know, Um, especially if you want to reduce the, uh, again, like mega inflammatory exposure of ingredients. But, you know, here and there, not a big deal. It's You're not going to be pregnant forever, but at the same time, when you are pregnant, if you can at least do the 80-20 rule, where at least 80% of the time you're trying to do the best you can and 20% not. You know, and I totally know that there's some people listening probably being like, oh, it's completely, all bets are off. You know, you just eat when you can eat, you know, this or that. Totally. I've had clients that have had that situation. We've just been kind of like grasping at what can you keep down today. But again, if I have to give advice, which this whole podcast episode is about, I would say that taking care of your nutrient stores now or in the beginning or throughout your entire pregnancy, wherever, what stage you're at, is going to be so, 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 so key because I've usually seen the worst pregnancy situations come from people who did not pay very good attention or be mindful enough to work on that prior to getting pregnant or during being pregnant. So, Um, You really don't want to have to get emergency IV drips or any of that kind of stuff. That's totally not necessary and not worth it. So you want to make sure that you're really good on your B vitamins, really good on your electrolytes, including your potassium and magnesium. You're really good on your iron. You know, a lot of us are anemic, especially females, and there's a lot of natural ways that you can bring your iron up, you know, cooking with cast iron, eating more red meat more natural, you know, organic, sustainably raised red meat. That's very good and easy way to get iron in your system in a very natural way, you know, despite what all of the fear mongering has been online, you know, and for anybody who's vegetarian or vegan, there's really good quality iron from plant-based sources that can be bioavailable. Like there's a company called My Kind Organics. They make a really good gentle one that is typically pretty absorbable. So you do want to be mindful of your iron, definitely be mindful of your iron. Because I mean, your blood needs iron, your baby's blood needs iron. And when your body is creating a baby, it's going to prioritize the baby taking that iron. And so it's really key that you keep an eye on your own body and how you're doing and look up, you know, you can Google symptoms of low iron and kind of keep an eye on knowing if you are somebody who is struggling with your iron levels or not. Again, I would ideally recommend you pay attention to the stuff, get your blood tested, figure out your mineral, vitamin and mineral levels before pregnancy if you want to optimize your pregnancy as far as nutrition goes, okay? So again, you really want to make sure that you are prioritizing nutrient-dense foods that can help sustain adequate nutrients for both you and the baby. That is the best thing that I can tell you as far as my advice goes for nutrition throughout pregnancy. And again, towards the latter half of your pregnancy, should you have challenges with cravings, you know, heed those cravings. It's absolutely natural and okay and probably welcome. But at the same time, be mindful of how much you heed them and also be paying attention to perhaps what it's telling you. You know, what? why are you craving that? What could you be craving ultimately? And can you find a more nourishing substitute for that nutrient your body's craving versus just constantly going and getting french fries or something like that, you know, super, super, super key. All right, guys. So I think that that is going to wrap it up for today's chat. I know I kept it very foundational and advice based. So of course, if you want me to get into more details and nitty gritty, I would love to. We are going to have some amazing podcast guests on the show that are pregnancy experts. So stay tuned for those episodes for maybe more of those specific details. But I hope that 
everything we talked about today was helpful for you and it brought a little bit of light to navigating your fitness and nutrition throughout your pregnancy because it is so key that you are really in tune with your kind of mental game plan. But do know too, you know, it's not always going to go the way you want it to go and that's okay. Do not make rigid plans during pregnancy. It is always going to be an exercise in futility, they say, because one month can go great, the next month can go tits up, and then you can realign and do better. You know, it it goes all over the place. It's totally a roller coaster sometimes. But as always, I would love it if you would help our podcast grow, share this episode with anyone you think needs it. Maybe you have a bestie who is getting pregnant or is pregnant right now, and you think she might benefit from hearing today's chat. But I will always encourage you to celebrate your strength and nourishment, walk with confidence, and I will catch you next week on another episode of Rebel Wellness. Hey Rebel, I just want to say a huge thank you for tuning in and sharing this space with us. Before we sign off, I've got some exciting ways for you to stay connected and to take your wellness journey even further with me. First up, if you haven't already, make sure to swing by coachkales.com and sign up for our newsletter. It's your go-to source for the latest episodes, exclusive content, and a whole lot more wellness goodness delivered straight to your inbox. Check out the show notes for those high quality tips on nutrition, fitness, and just overall well-being. Follow us on Instagram at Rebel Wellness Podcast and my flagship page at Kaylee Loren. We're all about building a community where we can share, inspire, and grow together. So I would love to see you there. Now, if you're looking to reset and realign after a vacation, a hectic work season, or just because you feel like it's time for a healthful cleanse, I've got something super special for you and it's 100% free. Head over to stand.store backslash kales and download my free realignment detox guide. You can also find it at coachkale.com in the freebie section. I'm sharing my unique holistic approach to help you cut back inflammation, improve your skin, and even shed some excess weight with this guide. So trust me, you're going to love it. Go download it for free now. But last but not certainly least, if you've got a burning health question you'd like answered on the show, or if you're curious about my one-on-one remote coaching or group courses, don't hesitate to visit my website and reach out to me there or hello at kayleelauren.com is my best email for contacting me. I am here to support you on your journey to wellness, so do not feel afraid to reach out. All right, Rebel, catch you on the next episode.